Salabedi Forex and Cargo are proud to sponsor the Uganda Vision Program. Contact us if you want to send cargo or transfer money to loved ones in Uganda. Call us on 0208 884 4060. if you want to send cargo or transfer money to loved ones in Uganda. Call us on 0208 884 4060. Tuna sanyuko bauliza no baueleza. Hello. Welcome. Welcome to you our viewers on this week's edition of the Uganda Vision program. Musibyo mutya basibone banyabo. Muri mutya. Agandi, Kopango, Habari. This is the Uganda Vision program. Every Monday, as you know, at Sky Channel 184. And we have brought you more in stock for you today. The weather is lovely, Paris, isn't it's it? It's quite good. It's quite nice today. Yes, compared to what we expect during this time every year. Or later on. Yes, the weather is good. <laughs> my name is Solome Kazana. And I'm my co-host, Paris. And we are here to present to you beautiful things about Uganda. And today we have a lot from tourism, music, speeches from the Minister of Petroleum. As you will watch, keep tuned in. Still an hour to go. Put your feet up. It's the Uganda Vision Program. Uh, Paris, what do we have first today? First, today we have tourism, and today we're focusing on the East African region. Mm -hmm. As you all know, in the East African region, we have beautiful animals, wildlife, trees, forestry, and there was a time we did something about the species of birds in Uganda. Which was so you lovely, know, yeah. Being the Pearl of Africa, over 1,000 species of birds in Uganda. So today we're bringing all of that in, focusing on Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, the wildlife, the Serengeti, everything. So stay tuned here at Ben Television for Uganda Vision. Yes, Uganda as part of the East African community. So enjoy our natural resources, species and birds and all the animals out there. Enjoy. African community countries of Burundi, Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania and Uganda pride themselves on offering visitors a rich and varied array of tourism attractions, the combination of which is unique to this part of the world. These range from stunning natural formations to exciting wildlife encounters and even unique cultural encounters. The region also boasts some of the finest beaches in the world. Burundi, the Eden in the heart of Africa. Both the geographical location of Burundi in the heart of Africa, as well as its magnificent vistas and panoramas, make this country a true paradise. Sometimes referred to as the Switzerland of Africa, Burundi's warm, gentle climate combines with great variations in the country's geographical formations to make it an interesting as well as relaxing holiday destination. Renowned for its legendary hospitality, a visit to Burundi is not complete without taking in all of the exciting attractions which the country has to offer. 
Only then can one discover the same Garden of Eden, which some of the famous explorers of the great African continent will have found a hundred and more years ago. From the area of the peak Congo Nile and its vast Kibera forest to the tropical central plateau surrounded by more than 1,000 hills, to the lowlands of eastern and northern Burundi, the country will lavish you with countless experiences to excite all of your senses. Kenya, the pride of Africa. Kenya is one of the world's great tourism destinations, known for its remarkable diversity of landscapes, wildlife and cultures. From sweeping savannas to tropical beaches and coral reefs, dense equatorial forests to mighty snow-capped mountains and more, Kenya is a world unto itself. Take a look around and discover the wonders of this great country firsthand. You will experience the work savanna, the views from the spectacular peaks, the awe-inspiring rift valley and the desert wilderness of the north. The coastline of Kenya is a tropical idli of soft white sands and gentle sea breeze, where the passing of a day is marked by the slow arc of the sun. The pace of life on the coast is notably slower, languid, more relaxed and at peace with the world. The coast is a place with a long and exotic history. Along the length of this coast, Arab and Portuguese forts Old towns and the overgrown, deserted ruins of Swahili outposts bear witness to this fascinating history. In the winding medieval streets and bustling markets of Lamu and Mombasa Old Town, life has continued unhurried and unchanged for more than 400 years. This blend of natural beauty and living history creates an exotic paradise unlike anywhere else on earth. Kenya has a culture born of countless sources. This region has been crossed by the paths of a long and complex history. From the prehistoric records of early man to the present day, Kenya has been a land of unending change, contrast and diversity. High altitude Kenya offers something for everyone, including refreshing hill walks through bird-rich areas and more active hikes into mountain forests. Above all, there is mighty Mount Kenya, whose slopes are the perfect trekking destination. The mountain's alpine peak is a challenging technical summit for the experienced mountaineer. Rwanda, where Africa comes together. Welcome to the land of the thousand hills. Rwanda sits at the hub of Africa. Here, at the center of the Albertine Rift, where deep volcanic forces press the continental plates apart, you'll discover a world of exquisite beauty and unsurpassed biodiversity. Rwanda is the bridge between the forest ecosystems of the Congo Basin and the Great Rift Valley of the East. It shares in the biological riches of both worlds, offering a concentration of biodiversity found nowhere else in Africa. Walk through a primeval forest bathed in green. Thrill to the sight of that rarest of beasts, the mountain gorilla. Look into the eyes and look into yourself. You're here. You are in Rwanda and you've discovered a new African dawn. Discover a new place, a new adventure, new friends and unimaginable beauty. The Virungas are the last outpost of the endangered mountain gorilla and their lush slopes provide an appropriately dramatic natural setting for what is perhaps the most poignant and thrilling wildlife experience to be had in Africa. Nothing can prepare the visitor for the impact of encountering a troop of gorillas munching bamboo in their unfenced natural habitat. The sheer physical presence of an adult male silverback three times the size of an average man, yet remarkably peaceable and tolerant of human visitors, defies verbal description. Nor are there words to convey the thrill of recognition attached to staring deep into the liquid brown eyes of these gentle giants, who 
who share some 97% of their genes with humans. Tanzania, the land of Kilimanjaro, Zanzibar and the Serengeti. With such a perfect location, perched on the edge of the African continent and facing the Indian Ocean, Tanzania's weather and climate leaves nothing to be desired. Warm sunny days are followed by cool and balmy nights. And whether you're on safari on the Serengeti Plains or enjoying the tropical beaches of Zanzibar, the temperatures are always welcoming and exciting. Tanzania has within its borders some of the most incredible tribal diversity to be found in Africa. The country is home to approximately 120 tribal groups, most of which comprise small communities that are gradually being assimilated into the larger population due to changes in land use and the economic draw of city life. The Spice Islands of the Zanzibar Archipelago, Pemba, Mafia, and the entire Tanzania coast is home to the Swahili people, a vibrant mix of Arab, Indian and Bantu origins who historically based their livelihoods around Indian Ocean trade. Tanzania has more land devoted to national parks and game reserves than any other wildlife destination in the world. Everything from pristine coral reefs to the crater highlands Remote game reserves and the famous national parks are protected by government law and placed in trust for future generations to marvel at it in wonder. Oh. Serengeti is easily Tanzania's most famous national park and it's also the largest. Its far-reaching plains of endless grass tinged with the twisted shadows of acacia trees have made it the quintessential image of a wild and untarnished Africa. The annual wildebeest migration through the Serengeti and the Maasai Mara attract visitors from around the world who flock to the open plains to witness the largest mass movement of land animals on the planet. More than a million animals make the seasonal journey to fresh pasture, first to the north, then the south, after the biannual rain. Above the gently rolling hills and plateau of northern Tanzania rises the spectacular snow-covered peak of Mount Kilimanjaro, its slopes and glaciers shimmering above the rising clouds. Not only is this the roof of Africa, but the mountain's ecosystems are as strikingly beautiful as they are varied and diverse. The Ngorongoro crater is often called Africa's Eden and the eighth natural wonder of the world. A visit to the crater is perhaps the most important draw card for tourists coming to Tanzania and is a definite world-class attraction. Within the crater rim, large herds of zebra and wildebeest graze while sleeping lions laze in the sun. At dawn, the endangered black rhino returns to the thick cover of the crater forests after grazing on dew-laden grass in the morning mist. Just outside the crater's ridge, tall Maasai herd their cattle and goats over green pastures through the highland slopes, living along the wildlife as they have done for countless centuries. Zanzibar's coastline offers some of the best beaches in the world. On the south coast of Zanzibar lies the Menai Bay Conservation Area a sea turtle protection area for the endangered species that comes to breed on the island. Uganda, the Pearl of Africa. Uganda's reputation as Africa's friendliest country stems partly from the traditions of hospitality common to its culturally diverse populace and partly from the remarkably low level of crime and hassle directed at tourists. Uganda has long been a cultural melting pot as evidenced by the 30-plus different indigenous languages belonging to five distinct linguistic groups and an equally diverse cultural mosaic of music, art and handicrafts. Sprawling across both sides of the equator, 
A network of 10 national parks and several other protected areas offers wildlife enthusiasts a thrilling opportunity to experience Uganda's biodiversity. Not only the mesmerizing tracks of thornbush savanna, teeming with antelope, buffalo and elephant one tends to associate with equatorial East Africa, but also lush expanses of tropical rainforest, shimmering lakes and rivers heaving with aquatic life and the glacial peaks of Africa's tallest mountain range. Uganda's star attraction is the endangered mountain gorilla, the bulkiest of living primates and amongst the most peaceable. Staring into the pensive brown eyes of these gentle giants, who share 97% of their genes with humans, is as humbling as it is thrilling. No less so when one realizes that fewer than 700 individuals survive divided between Windy National Park and the Virunga Mountains. Within Uganda's borders lies the source of the Nile, alluded to hazily in the ancient writings of Ptolemy, and which stood as one of the greatest geographical mysteries of the Victorian age. Transitional to the eastern African savanna and the western rainforests, Uganda is Africa's most complete bird-watching destination, with more than 1,000 species recorded within an area comparable to that of Great Britain. The East African community countries are truly a unique holiday destination on Earth. Welcome back. I hope you have enjoyed the East African tourism. Next time you're on holiday, try to enjoy everything about East Africa. Our natural resources and wildlife is really good, as you might have seen. Um, right now, we're enjoying the British weather. And to you, our viewers, we just wanted you to know, right now we're filming from, to my far left, it's the Canary Wharf. Right there is the city airport. And you won't be able to see after the city airport, but it's not far from the Westfield, which is where the Olympics will be taking place. So, ladies and gentlemen, keep up. Those of you who are coming for the Olympics, do not forget to watch Uganda Vision program when you come here, which is on Sky Channel 184 every Monday, 7 p.m. Next, our viewers, we have got a keynote speech from the Minister of Petroleum, Irene Moloney, who was here recently during the Uganda Convention. Um, take good note of it our viewers we're waiting for your comments we're waiting for your debates and you know this is uganda uganda vision and how we can develop each other and push the image and vision of uganda enjoy well it's my great privilege and honor now to introduce our keynote speaker it's the uh, honorable minister for energy and mineral development uh, irene maloney and uh, she's come especially from uh, Uganda to be part of this conference, so we're very honoured that she's uh, seen fit to uh, come and contribute to it and, and learn from us. As you know, Uganda is one of the new um, oil-producing countries in Africa, or, or shortly will be, and so is facing all the challenges that are involved with that and wants to avoid perhaps some of the mistakes that uh, countries uh, in Africa before uh, have faced. So we're really interested in uh, listening to what she has to say to us and uh, we really thank her for, for being here. So thank you very much, Minister, and uh, we look forward to your contribution. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, good morning to all of you participants here present. Uh, all protocol observed, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's my pleasure and honor to be with you this morning uh, mm -hmm. to give a keynote address on the oil politics in Africa. And at this material time, I want to thank Chatham House very much for the invitation and for enabling me 
uh, to participate at this conference. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure every one of you in this hall must have heard about the discovery of oil in Uganda. And I'm certain that uh, the majority of you are here to hear what's going on in Uganda, uh, what politics is at play, what plans, how can you get involved in the oil business in Uganda. And on our part as Ugandans, we are very excited about this discovery. And uh, we are working hard to ensure that we harness this resource in the most transparent and accountable manner so that it can go towards accelerated development of our economy and improve the livelihoods of our people. And of course, as I've said, a lot of interest has been generated from investors world over um, about the oil in Uganda. But looking at Africa as a region with the discovery of oil, um, definitely the interest is a lot because this gives opportunity for investment in Africa as a region. There's a lot of potential, there are a lot of opportunities, and I think it's one of the regions that everyone in this world is looking at. A number of countries in Africa have discovered oil, uh, right from Nigeria, Angola, Libya, Algeria, Sudan, and uh, of course, Ghana in West Africa, uh, Tanzania, Mozambique in East Africa, and as I've said, of recent Uganda has joined. Now in Africa as a region, I think it has the third largest global oil reserves. And therefore, the harnessing of these resources has, as I've said, generated a lot of interest among communities, investors, civil society, the media, and of course the governments themselves. Uh, at this material time, there is strong resolve more than ever before to emulate the best practices that have worked for countries uh, that have used their natural resources to better the lives of their population. When you talk about oil, so many issues come into play. And I'm talking this from my experience back home in Uganda. The discovery of oil has generated so much interest. Issues that come into play are governance. People are looking at good governance. Transparency and accountability is the talk of the day. Job creation, where we have high levels of unemployment, it's an opportunity. Environmental management, because of what goes with oil production processing. The environment has to be put into consideration because of the repercussions it can have if it's not properly managed. National participation. The people in the country look at that resource as a way of accelerating development and bettering their lives. Awareness and sensitization, everyone wants to know what's going on. Information dissemination is very critical. People want to know what plans, how much oil, when they are going to benefit from it, how they are going to participate in it, and so on and so forth. Better social infrastructure and services, that is what the ordinary person is looking at. How can I lead a better life? How can we have infrastructure, electricity, roads, schools, hospitals, because everyone knows that uh, oil is a resource 
which if properly harnessed, can definitely have a positive impact on their lives. And being a national resource, every citizen would like to partake and would like to be part and parcel of the process. And that is why it has generated so much interest. And therefore, issues of geopolitics need to be addressed uh, when it comes to common border resources or cross-border infrastructure, such as the pipelines, and uh, ensure that the plans that one has take into consideration on all of those aspects. Having said that, it's important to share with you uh, my experience in the oil industry within the short time that I have been appointed as Minister for Energy and Mineral Development. I was appointed in June uh, this year, and therefore I think I've been in this office for about uh, five months now. Uh, but as soon as I entered the office, uh, I found my plate full, flowing with oil. So how I handle this issue is very critical, and I have come with open hands and open ears to listen, to learn, so that how I steer uh, this re uh, harnessing of this resource for my country is to the best and uh, for the benefit of my country.